All right, good evening, everyone. Mike here with the National Weather Service Office in Cleveland. And uh, as we were talking about earlier this afternoon, we thought we would uh, do a little Facebook Live evening weather chat with you. Uh, just a little um, kind of like a severe weather, severe storm recap of what we saw uh, Tuesday, late Tuesday night into very early Wednesday. And uh, between those hours of 10 o'clock and 2, 10 o'clock p.m. and 2 o'clock a.m. that night. So we'll, uh, we'll wait a minute and see if everyone wants to hop on here. We'll talk for about five or 10 minutes if you had any questions about what happened and uh, kind of show you a little bit behind the scenes of what we see on radar and what we were looking at and what we were anticipating, which happened, which is uh, very, very uh, interesting. So um, while we're waiting on, I uh, just want to show you real quick, we had to do some updates with the forecast this evening. Um, I want to flip the camera around and show you what's going on in eastern um, Erie, uh, on the eastern Erie PA county line over towards southwestern uh, New York this evening. In fact, we had to issue a winter weather advisory for some accumulating snow tonight for the inland areas the higher terrain and we got some of the cameras out there and uh this is one of the uh, ski hills uh, ski resorts or ski hills out there uh, on the near the county line of erie pa and, and uh, southwest new york and you can see it is snowing out there actually it has some snow uh, ongoing right now now that the sun is setting and the snow is picking up with some of the lake effect uh, this is already starting to accumulate so with that said we did issue a winter weather advisory uh, for this evening through early tomorrow morning or mid tomorrow morning uh, for inland erie county and we're anticipating three to five inches potentially in the higher terrain away from the lake in the higher terrain and on uh, especially in the southern and eastern part of er inland erie county uh, you may see three to five maybe isolated six amounts uh, reports of snowfall by tomorrow morning lesser amounts outside of that general area maybe a one to two or one to three down in crawford county can't rule out a dusting or maybe up to an inch maybe two uh, for parts of geauga the hillier areas of geauga county inland ashabila county but not necessarily Necessarily, what we call winter weather advisory uh, criteria. There's just a slightly higher chance of seeing some some uh, accumulating snow for part, portions of the snow belt area across northwestern PA. So just take that to uh, just be be reminded if you are having to do any travel uh, early in the morning, um, if you're going off to work in the early morning, uh, might be having to deal with that. So again, very very interesting weather today. So and very interesting clouds. Actually, I want to show you real quick uh, what we saw out here at the airport so some very interesting cloud formations you can go to our twitter or facebook page and see these very cool uh high base very high base um instability showers with due to the very cold air aloft. Um, and so this is high base, uh, almost like a thunderstorm, but high base thunderstorms. And these were actually curtains of rain showers and snow showers and grapple and even hailstones. We had some hailstones of dimes to even penny size, uh, a little bit of lightning as well. Some very, very neat um, photographic uh, type um, uh, imagery from mother nature. And this is actually a rain or snow curtain coming down, some uh, uh, grapple curtain coming down from the high base cloud not not scud clouds but actually curtains of this rain showers and snow showers just thought i'd show you that okay so let's talk about what happened um late tuesday night and we'll actually show you some pictures of this damage uh real quickly as well and show you why or explain a few things that happened with the with the tracks too so here was that squall line coming in and again we were really concerned about this advancing storm front coming in uh slamming on shore and at the same time there was some kind of subtle boundary down here that we were watching that warm front and as this thing kind of got on shore and started really getting a lot of wind and some hail i want you to pay attention to this storm right here this one is a, kind of a, the strongest storm embedded in this this line now there's thing there's a couple things going on with this um first off uh we look at we look at the shear environment in here and so what we, what we what we notice with this storm is right in the neutral part of this complex uh anything west of the storm is what we call outflow dominant and we kind of saw the outflow already pushing well ahead of the storm is this this green line right here so what we knew is this is just going to be wind and rain maybe a little hail and lightning but no tornadic activity was going to come out of this because it was what we call gust fronted out it was outflowed 
anything from this storm north to eastward had the potential of getting um, a better circulation, better rotation, and that's why we were really concerned about this one because this one was the, the meanest looking storm that could interact with this warm frontal boundary. So as we look at this, we already starting to get a little bit um, interesting feature here. I'm gonna flip over and put what we call the velocity on here. So give me just a second. All right, let me put the storm motion for that night. It was roughly 300, 310 at 45 knots, give or take. All right, let's see if I can get this to, there we go. All right, that's much, much better. Okay, so we got the velocity right here, and then this is the reflectivity. This is what you usually see uh, with the, ra the rain and the hail, and this is what you see with the winds. So let's, let's go and look at, uh, as we go into time, this is the feature that we were worried about. So again, this, this is a very unstable atmosphere. Remember how warm it was Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday evening, and uh, the atmosphere was just primed to, to go. It was very, very juicy, very humid, very spring-like, kind of felt like May. Um, and so this came in and started interacting with all that potential energy, what we call CAPE. And this is what got our attention near Grafton. We saw this kind of hook and the surge. And as we look over into the, the, the Doppler effect, there was two circulations that really got our attention. You can see them right here. Number one, number two. Number two is the further south one, southwest one. We were mostly concerned with this one, but both of them were, were potentially dangerous. So that grabbed our attention. And as we looked at one more scan, we're like, okay, it's time to go ahead and get that tornado warning out. So we issued that tornado warning for this appendage right here. And kind of see, now we had some radar issues with the, 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 the uh, what we call the scene right here. So this is kind of a, uh, uh, the radar's messed up on its uh, uh, velocity scan, but we knew that the rotation's right there and right here. So this is for uh, uh, Southwestern Lorraine, and our southeastern Lorraine into Medina County. And this is where we are starting to see uh, here reports of damage of Medina. We're really worried about Medina at this time. As we look a little bit further downstream, again, the Doppler had some issues with the uh, velocities, but we still saw what we call this kind of curly cue right here. So that's where it is going down State Route 57 there. And um, uh, state route, uh, excuse me, state route 18, eight, state route 18. And then so right here's the, the hook, and this is embedded with a squall line. So this is QLCS uh, type uh, uh, tornadic activity. And again, the velocity was messing up right here, but we knew this was in the, in the right place at the right atmospheric conditions for this to continue to go and strengthen as it moved through the Medina area. So that tornado warning was out and then really started wrapping up, like it's, it's almost a classic uh, curly Q hook right here as it moved away from Medina and heading towards Wadsworth. And there it is right there, the velocity. The velocity kind of messed up here. It gets better, the velocity gets better as we get past this time frame. But um, again, here we go, we're gonna cross over uh, I-71 there, heading toward uh, I-76 in the Wadsworth area, you can see this. Now all this was strong winds, don't, don't get me wrong, but there's really two circulations here. This is the bigger one, this is the smaller one that we're getting worried about as well. As we go into time, this one kind of fizzled out for a second. And then this one kind of started uh, getting stronger, the, the one that a little bit further north. So we still have a weak circulation here. And then we have this one. So new tornado warning comes, comes out. This one, we're watching both of them, but now our attention is going to be drawn to this one up here. Um, and then right about here, let me, right about here is when this one starts touching down near Barberton. Now we haven't had any, we still get wind damage out of this one, but this one's the one that has the tornado on the ground near Barberton. You can see this little appendage right here. And then we'll come over here, I'll look at the velocity. So there's your two couplets. This one was the Medina one. Now this is the one that's taken over. This is near Barberton. This is the rotation couplet. So there's two of them associated with the two little appendages right here. Okay, and so we keep on going. The radar's doing some, some weird things right here. But then we still see these two circulations. Now one's going toward green. One's going toward Canal Fulton. And then we look at the radar here. Still has it. Now we're getting farther and farther away from the radar, so it's a little harder to see. 
because these things need you have to see these closer to the radar but we still have these dominant two circulations this one's still on the ground this tornado they're green ef1 and then we go into time this circulation that's near uh the canton akron canton airport is there but it loses its its rotational couplet right there so it lifts we still get wind damage you're still getting wind damage but the actual tornado lifts for a little bit and we're still watching these two this other circulation back in here and then so as we go into time this slams into canton with a lot of wind and eventually this uh, produces another tornado down near east sparta and it goes down into the the tuscarawas county so i just want to show you that and i'm going to show you some really neat damage photos from above but again i want to show you back to the where it was the scariest up here near medina let me get back to uh, where the curly q is and it was it was it was really a, a, a a classic setup let me get back to there we go so there you can see it i mean it's just like spinning spinning like a a, a top right there a hook and you can see it on the doppler right here so let me show you some really deep pictures from above these are really really fascinating this is if you can see this is a field a uh, farm field um out in medina county and uh looking at uh, this over, we'll, we'll take a look at closer look at all this damage right here does anyone want to think, guess what this little line moving through this field is? This is the, the day after. Look at this thing. This is actually the small tornado track. This is the tornado path right here. Now, what would, what had been interesting, if this was a little bit more grown up, the grass was taller or whatever was in this field was, was planted and, and grown up and this thing went through, we would actually see the swirls of the wind pattern in this field and then all the way connecting all the way up into the, where the damage is. But since this is very short grass, this is actually the intense vortex of the tornado the ef1 that was uh, was able to draw a a path or carve a path through this field as it went through this agricultural area so very very fascinating so um let's go ahead and look at some of the pictures of the damage and i want to show you now a lot of folks think wind damage is automatically a tornado that is not the case straight line winds can cause just as much damage as a tornado but what we do as national west service meteorologists we want to go out and confirm that the wind damage is associated with one type of wind versus the other is it straight line winds or is it tornadic because straight line winds everything's blown in one direction everything's kind of in one facing direction tornadic winds have things falling in different patterns and that's what we look for and i want you to see how this is a very good indication that this was a tornado that went through here so these are trees down so you got tree down here you got a tree down facing this way so you got most of your trees right here are facing kind of one direction but if you look closely there's one tree that's not facing that way it's falling this way up here there's another one this tree's falling this way but this tree's falling this way so there's a convergence pattern which is key a convergence means it's kind of being focused into the center line and also there's trees falling in different directions so that means rotation not everything's falling in one direction things are falling in different directions in a convergent pattern yeah ryan that is a very tiny that vortex was very tiny but when it went through this this uh residence this uh, uh uh house area this you can see how it was much bigger it's about the size of a football field as it moved across this but the vortex the center part of the strongest winds of that vortex carved out that uh skinny path through um the uh, the field now again like i said if this was grown up we would see big swirls of wind patterns in this field maybe uh, and we'll, that happens a lot especially out in tornado alley where uh, the corn fields are and they have tornadoes through the corn field they can see patterns of swirls like that so again let's show you some more pictures so here here's more pictures of why this was you can see this is the field back in here and you can see the different directions the trees are falling this one's pushed this way that one's pushed this way that one's pushed that way so that means rotational strong rotational winds went through here it's not all pushed in one direction another vantage point here you can see the winds push this one this one these trees are falling that way these trees are falling this way this one's falling this way so that means there's rotation like this 
So let's go ahead and look at some other pictures here. Oh, there's some good pictures. There's good pictures of uh, spruce type trees falling down, unfortunately uprooted. But I had one other picture. Uh, I can't find it now. But anyway, just want to show you that that's how we determine the tornado versus straight line winds is how all the individual tracks, all three of them, we may actually have to do some, we may uh, look at some more damage that we're just now hearing about. But anyway, just want to show you that that is um, what we have so far confirmed. Has radar loop, which is right where I just showed you, the radar. You can see the, the circulations on there, what we look at, and then more and more damage, uh, pictures and reports. So you can look at all that. You just go to weather.gov, Cleveland. Look on that top uh, link and the severe storms hit April 7th and 9th, or 8th, April 7th and 8th. All right, so uh, let's see. Michael asks, the surveys are very data uh, uh, intensive. Yes, they are. Uh, we, we look at, we have to go in like an investigator and trying to investigate. Now, we have obviously radar data, what the radar sees, the science, we know what uh, our training tells us what we're looking for, what we're trained on looking for, and then does the science match up with what we're seeing on the ground, the damage, the damage patterns, kind of like, a, you know, just kind of like we're, we're looking for clues to tell us, okay, this is straight line winds or this is more rotational winds. And obviously um, straight line winds can do can do just as much damage as a small tornado. A lot of folks associate wind damage as tornadic. No, 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 no. That's not the case. We have to go in and look to see if there's actual evidence of rotation with this, with the, with the debris or with the damage that happened. Trees falling in different directions, things like that. So good, good question, good, good comment there. Uh, let's see, Jason asked what software that was. That was GR2 for the radar. Um, uh, and there's other apps to you. There's other programs on maps, but that's that's GR. That's level two uh, Doppler radar, which you can download. It's all free on the internet. So the the data to get the radar data is free, not not the program. All right, thanks, Bridgerman. Thanks for joining us. Thanks and uh, hello from Wendy from Ottawa County. So any other questions? All right, thanks, Mike, for joining us. Uh, thanks uh, thanks for the compliment for the other night. Hopefully, we'll do more of these if you guys like that. Oh, let me t tell you one more thing. Um, we're going to plan on doing another Skywarn, virtual live Skywarn and severe weather safety class online via Facebook. We're going to do it in the evening sometime next week. So I think we're going to try to go for maybe um, next Wednesday evening. Don't quote me that yet. Let me let me finalize some details, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do one in the early to mid evening uh, and put the date and time on our Facebook or our social media pages so you know we're going to do an evening class. We, we've had a lot of uh, questions and feedback, wanting, folks wanting an evening class. So we'll give an evening time uh, sometime next week, and I'll, I'll, we'll put that on Facebook and social media so you guys will know when and where and how to log in and watch the or, or listen to or at least participate interactively with the uh, the, the online sky warrant class that we did earlier this week okay all right well hey everyone stay safe and sorry about the snowflakes that'll be flying tonight a uh, little little bit more winter to deal with some of you out in the east uh, in the snow belt will have to deal with several inches maybe but be careful out there and stay safe and we will talk to you later from the national weather service in cleveland